Welcome to worship in the Unitarian Universalist Church of Charlotte. Our city and region have careened this week between unseasonable warmth, unnerving flooding, unusual winds, a little snow, and now back to a crisp, temperate, early February day. This tumultuous week of weather notwithstanding, our town and those that surround it are coming to life again, blossoming and budding, initial bursts of color, welcomed glimpses of blooms. We're not alone, of course. In many places throughout the Northern Hemisphere, the Earth is awakening showing signs of its impending rebirth. If, as philosopher Alain de Botton claims, you normally have to be bashed about a bit by life to see the point of daffodils, <laughs> we in these times must surely qualify. Amid such incivility, and ugliness. We welcome with special appreciation this year's profusion of winter's impatient bloomers, those simple and majestic clumps of daffodils. And we welcome you to this gathering, focused in a certain rather unusual way on the blossoming of the daffodils. As we prepare to sing, would you please make sure that your phone, too, has been silenced? <laughs> then rise to greet those seated near you. Welcome.
bless the earth and all your children, one creation. Make us whole, interwoven, all connected, planet-wide and inmost soul. Holy Mother, life bestowing, bid our waste and warfare cease. Fill us all with grace or flowing. Teach us how to live in peace. Welcome. We're happy you're with us today in this room or joining us remotely. We're pleased to have guests with us. Our members would like to greet you personally following the service. So if you are visiting, please raise your hand and keep it up. Members, take note of the guests seated near you, and after the service, invite them to join you for coffee and conversation in Freeman Hall. Should, you, uh, should it enhance your experience of future services, we do offer large print orders of service, personal hearing assistance devices, and we have an elevator in, available in the vestibule. If you'd like to learn more about us, please fill out a yellow card and place it in the offering basket later in the service. Members with a life event to share can do so on the re reverse side of the card. The cards and offering envelopes are on the clipboards at the end of each row. Please begin passing them now. Visitors interested in hearing how to become a member can talk with our membership coordinator, Kelly Green. There's Kelly. Her contact information is on the back of the order. Again, to each of you, welcome. It was during the first Gulf War that Jane Hirschfield would write, Narcissus, Tel Aviv, Baghdad, 
San Francisco, February 1991. And then the precise opening everywhere of the flowers, which live, after all, in their own time. It seemed they were oblivious, but they were not. They included it all, the nameless explosions and the oil fires in every cell, the white petals like mirrors opening in a slow motion coming apart, and the stems, the stems rising like green flaring missiles, like smoke like the small sounds shaken from those who were beaten, like dust from a carpet into the wind and the spring-scented rain. They opened because it was time, and they had no choice. As the children were born in that time and that place and became what they would without choice or with only a little choice, perhaps for the lucky, the foolish, or brave. But precise and in fact wholly peaceful, the flowers opened and precise and peaceful, the earth opened because it was asked. Again and again it was asked, and the earth opened, flowered, and fell because what was falling had asked and could not be refused. As the seabirds that ask the green surface to open are not refused, but instantly welcomed, that they may enter and eat, as soon refuse, battered and soaking the dark mahogany rain.
In the 1970s, Mohammed Abbas Baran was a well-known Kurdish singer-songwriter appearing on Iraqi television. In grainy, old, pixelated YouTube videos, a young, heavily mustachioed Abbas Baran appears as a suave character, crooning earnest, poignant tunes accompanied by Kurdish dancers. Aided by formal music training in Baghdad, he would create popular songs whose lyrics often expressed a longing for peace in his beloved Kurdistan, that troubled region still so often in our news. In one of Mohammed Abbas Baram's popular songs, he sings, Kurds are rewarded with Narcissus. In this beautiful land, let us offer Narcissus for the freedom of Kurdistan. Narcissus, as you may know, is the Latin name for a group of flowering bulbs of which there are several species, genus Narcissus, member of the Amaryllidaceae family. Some of them have been cultivated for hundreds, even thousands of years. They're native to the Mediterranean region, appearing in many places. The most common Narcissus for us is the daffodil, that tender, impatient, harbinger of spring, now making a tentative appearance in these variously chilly, clear, snowy, steamy, <laughs> stormy, sunny, warm, wet, windy days. <laughs> Muhammad Abbas Baran has long been exiled from his home in Kirkuk for his role as one of the Kurdish freedom fighters. With longing, he also sang, they say the daffodil has changed color, her fragrance and feeling transformed. That is why she is sad and dejected, displaced and uprooted. Such <coughs> has befallen my Kurdistan. The daffodil, this common flower, sign and symbol of generations of Kurdish dreams for liberation and peace in a homeland of their own. And the earth, we have spread it out, professes the Quran, and produced therein every kind of beautiful growth. A figure in Hebrew scripture acclaims in one translation, I am like the Narcissus, fresh from the Garden of Eden. The rabbi Jesus counseled his followers to consider the lilies of the field. We hear in these spiritual pointers an echo of the hymn we sang earlier, Earth was given as a garden, cradle for humanity, the garden we intone where all life flows fresh and free. In each of these, each of us, in fact, all of humanity is called to notice the things of beauty that naturally abound in every location throughout the planet. Contemporary U.S. poet Jane Hirschfeld notices. She pays regular poetic attention to beauty. In her poem, the one you heard a few moments ago, Narcissus, Tel Aviv, Baghdad, San Francisco, February 1991, Hirschfeld notes beauty and botanical synchronicity, even in the middle of the first Gulf War. The Narcissus is blooming at the same time in Tel Aviv, in San Francisco, and in Baghdad. And then she writes the precise opening of the flowers, which live, after all, in their own time. They open, she writes, because, they, because it was time, and they had no choice. Precise and, in fact, wholly peaceful, the flowers opened. 
since Baghdad lies but two degrees latitude south of Charlotte, and since Mohammed Abbas Baram's beloved Kirkuk lies just fractions of a degree north of Charlotte, we might suppose that once again today, the Narcissus, like our own profusion of daffodils, is in bloom. We could compose our own poetic observation, call it Narcissus, Baghdad, Kirkuk, Ramallah, Jerusalem, Charlotte, February 2020. After all, the Narcissus in each of these places, places so fraught with enmity and hatred and violence is opening because it is time, opening because it has no choice, opening precise and in fact, wholly peaceful. Their tender shoots have broken ground that is soaked in the blood of human casualties. Their sunny blossoms have opened in acrid air filled with smoke and ash and the sounds of animosity. It seemed, writes Jane Hirschfeld, it seemed they were oblivious, but they were not. They included it all, the nameless explosions and the oil fires in every cell, the small sounds shaken from those who were beaten. Were we to do so, were we to create such a poem, it should not, it could not overlook the fact that the Narcissus in its native region continues to bloom amidst the sad spectacle of war. Wars in which we as a nation have played no small part. Hirschfeld writes that children were born in that time and that place and became what they would with no choice or with only a little choice perhaps for the lucky, the brave, the foolish. Babies birthed behind the barricades in Palestine amidst the violence, fear, and corrupt upheaval in Israel, in the impoverished instability of Iraq, in the long shadows cast by long-standing bipartisan collusion in Washington. Babies born in the month of Hirschfeld's poem, February 1991, are now young adults having babies of their own. They have yet to know a single day of real peace. Today, as we consider these narcissists of the field and of the curbside, today, as we feast again on the welcomed profusion of the daffodils, today, as we call to mind these flowers near to us and very far away, we offer them our profoundest remorse. Earth, according to ancient sacred stories, may have been given as a garden. But we humans have abused this gift, wounding the mother, Gaia, we share with all others. We are not like the flowers. We are not peaceful in our opening. We are makers of distinction, us or them. We are the makers of objections, us against them. We are the makers of war. Them as the stated enemy of us excusing, or so we say, the killing of them by us and us by them. Killing from Oval Office ordered drone attacks in this administration just as in the previous one. Killing from suicide bombing and the downing of passenger planes. Killing in sneak over the border attacks and as an excessive response to the throwing of rocks killing in state-supported sanctions, 
and in the bloated budget of our military-industrial complex. Dear Narcissus, dear Daffodils, to you today we confess. We do not open precisely and in fact wholly peaceful as you have done for millennia. To you, tender shoots who open the very earth we share with you, we confess the ways we have done and do damage to this earth. Beautiful Narcissus, tender daffodils, we are the ones who have broken the vows of creation. And all living things suffer from our savagery and from our greed. When will we ever learn? When will we ever learn? In this budding time when gray and brown transform before our very eyes into vibrant green and soft yellow, may these simple flowers serve as a reminder. <coughs> our friends and our enemies, all of us and all of them, are being given the very same gift. The earth is opening because it is time. May we see the blooming and may we imagine someone far, far from here is seeing their own new blossoms. May we notice the blooming and imagine someone with whom we are at odds is seeing the very same flowers and their hearts are leaping every bit as much as ours. May we pause and take in the uncommonly common, commonly uncommon sight of the simply exquisite death. And in that pause, let us collectively breathe the prayer of Roberta Bard, the writer of our hymn. She who poignantly prays, bless the earth and all your children. One creation, make us whole, interwoven, all connected, planet-wide and inmost soul. Holy Mother, life bestowing, bid our waste and warfare cease. Fill us all with grace or flowing. Teach us. Teach us, we pray. Teach us how to live in peace. <clears throat> Today, let us consider the blooming daffodils throughout our region. For as the Quran says, in them are signs. May they serve to remind us that other lands have sunlight too and Narcissus. May the sight of these sweet sunny blooms move us to remorse, to self-reflection, to contrition, to celebration, to joy and to an ever-deepening commitment to sing through the witness of our own lives a song of peace for their land and for ours. Amen. And may it be so.
There is an awakening in the earth. I can almost feel the earth move as the flowers are pushing through their winter coat of leaves. What joy I experience as I pull back the mulch and see a bit of green. I exclaim, oh, you made it through the winter, didn't you? Those tight buds encased in green are waiting to explode in colors of yellow, pink, red, purple, white, and even blue. It is true, they do indeed bloom in their own time. Now, I must confess, I have been known to cover those bits of green with a couple of handfuls of leaves or mulch and asking them to please wait just a little longer as we are sure to be getting a hard freeze. Our garden holds many surprises throughout the year and those surprises bring added joy when shared. How can I hold back a wow as a bright yellow crocus <coughs> pokes its head out in a bed of blue blooming vinca? I experience that wow over and over again when visiting other gardens. And Tom and I are lucky enough to be able to witness <coughs> that emotion of those who visit our garden. Imagine that wow moment with children as I tell them about the balloon flower. See the bulging bud, I say? Squeeze it gently like you would a tube of toothpaste and the bud will pop just like a balloon. About pig squeak. If you pick a leaf from among the dainty pink flowers and rub it between your fingers, it will make the sound of a pig squealing. <laughs> Perhaps a better name would be pig squeal instead of pig squeak. The eyes get big and the giggles begin when I ask, who would like to see the naked ladies in the garden? <laughs> the bright red, pink, and pale yellow flowers grow atop the stem, which is as bare as a baby's bottom. Absolutely no leaves, just stems. But the spidery blooms are stunning. The earth is asking for the daffodils and the crocus to open, and they do year after year. This moment in time when all is forgotten and forgiven you find yourself wrapped in the majesty. Certainly that moment of magic is felt by those all around the world. I begin this time with a celebration. On Friday evening, I came up here to the sound booth to load in the PowerPoint presentation that you see. And because of the storm on Thursday evening and because the rehearsal was canceled, as it turns out, 
this wonderful ensemble was in this room rehearsing as I was loading this presentation. And that beauty has carried me from Friday evening until early this morning when they were back in this room rehearsing. The music they're offering today is obviously of a more meditative sort and it may not lend itself to the same kinds of responses we often have to exquisite music. But I know you join me in thanking these amazing musicians for what they're offering us here. And to our remarkable director of music, who never fails to amaze us every week, John. <laughs> Welcome to our middle school class. Makes me slightly nervous they're here today taking notes <laughs> in preparation for the service that they will lead later in the spring. I have the treat of meeting with them next week to learn my grade. <laughs> Especially if you are a visitor here today, we commend to your perusal the listing of the activities of this congregation in the coming days that is printed in today's order. We point you to our website and to the posting there of our electronic newsletter, Currents where you'll find even more ways to be engaged. We hope, for example, that you will join members of this congregation for a session offered today at 1 o'clock back here in the sanctuary about the day-to-day -day workings of our congregation for family night or movie night or for our Discovering the UUCC session offered on this coming Saturday morning. All of this is made possible by our members' financial contributions. Now, members, this is a special announcement for you. Please watch for an email early this week informing you of an important congregational meeting related to our Focus 2020 process. The meeting will take place on Sunday, March 8th. The season of all of our lives includes time of celebration and of profound concern. The truth of our commitment to be a caring congregation is made real in our expressions of support for those experiencing special needs. My deep thanks to those of you who have, who have taken the time to respond with kindness to this time of stress and sadness for my family. <coughs> Today, we extend that love through prayers for Doris Browder and her family as Doris recovers from surgery, for Simone Lake and her family as Simone mourns the death of her sister. Gwen Movius, we hold you and Lee in our prayers as Lee faces health challenges and we hope you will pass our loving concern to Lee. To these and others, we express our loving concern.
Let's continue in meditation. As we breathe now together in common aspiration, we listen deeply, listen with our hearts, our souls, and we hear them. <coughs> we hear the cries of the children. from down the street and across the globe. We hear the cries of that disheveled middle school girl slinking into class in shame, having spent the past night huddled with other family members in a car, the only place she knows as home. We hear the cries of that trans kid, anxious, depressed, considering whether life is even worth it, while politicians mock and classmates bully. We hear the cries of that black boy taught from an early age the secret behavioral code of those who live in terror of an encounter with the police and who knows already the fate of an older cousin, a boy mistaken by a cop for a brute. We hear the cries of a courageous, misunderstood, maligned girl pleading with the leaders of this world to hear the cries of the earth before it is too late. We hear the cries of a Palestinian kid and an Israeli kid separated by an ugly wall and by generations of enmity and oppression, of a Congolese kid drafted as a child into a war that will steal every little shred of his childhood, of Iraqi and Iranian and Jordanian and Kurdish and Kuwaiti and Lebanese and Saudi and Syrian and Yemeni kids whose entire lives have been lived in one long walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We hear the cries today of kids in this country, children of right-wing conservatives and children of left-leaning progressives who listen day after day to the childish rancor of the adults in their lives, to name-calling, to derision, to declarations of worthlessness and indignity, and who thereby learn at a very young age that difference excuses deprecation. from the bottom of our hearts, from the very depths of our souls, again we pray, bless the earth and all your children. Bless the earth, bless all your children.
Salam. Salam. Shanti. Peace. Bless us, dark earth, as we give back that which we have received, as we make a forest of blessing, a ridge of blessing for the future to grow upon. We will now both give and receive the offering.
Aika El Wafi is a Moroccan Muslim woman who immigrated to France as a teenager. Her son is one of the men charged with the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center in New York. Phyllis Rodriguez is a Jewish woman whose son, Greg, was killed in that attack. The two women met, and out of their shared pain, they created a TED Talk together. Today, we include words of Aika Awafi from that talk as we together express that in which we place our trust. Please join me in an affirmation of our faith, rising in body and or spirit. We have to try. song, O God of all the nations, a song, a prayer, lives of peace for their lands and for ours. Please be seated.